So we're going to be spoiling the hell out of this film via the screen caps. The screen caps might be quite bloody slash graphic as well. That's just a quick warning. Now let's get into this. Discussing the merits of Stuart Gordon's Dagon from 2001. In a piece about Stuart Gordon's 2001 film Dagon, I wanted to champion it as one of the very best of Lovecraft adaptations in cinema, a much more serious and generally superior Shadow of Innsmouth translation and 1979 Screamers, one of Stuart Gordon's very best works, and possibly something of, or certainly, a horror masterpiece. I feel now it is more instructive, or might be, to cite why Dagon might not be a horror masterpiece. Uh, well, um, the acting, maybe? Uh, I find the performances to be okay, overall watchable, and not distractingly subpar in my own experience. Others might have a certain hiccup against performances, which I don't feel, however. Well, there's the pace and fairly rapid editing structure of the film. Very much a product of the 90s and early 2000s, whilst it isn't you know, a hyperactive techno music video, Dagon is far more energetic and liberal in its cuts and edits than, say, Reanimator, From Beyond, or Castle Freak. As a budget, are the former films more attempts to frame moving comic book panels, themed EC Horror Comics creep show you know? It possibly influences Gordon's own film work. Cinema prior to the 1990s was still very storyboarded and was not as willing to include several indecipherable cuts for an action sequence. This, firstly, had not been pioneered as regular mainstream Hollywood film trope until the 1990s, and the executives weren't confident, probably, in whether audiences would enjoy this style or not. Young audiences more so, as it would turn out. Psycho shower scene was one thing, but at one time not every action sequence or horrific moment in a film required 35 different quick shots slash cuts to translate the chaos of a moment. Dagon proves that four or five full surface. Dagon feels like a film which was shot with more portable, much less rigid cameras than Gordon might have worked with prior, or at least a more open environment. Reanimator and From Beyond were productions based upon a film set, Castle Freak also, well that was a real castle actually, it's, it's cool as obviously, great set, uh, great authentic set. Whereas Dagon had a Spanish town to work with, and given the film's pace and nature, mostly consisting of a character running and hiding around a town, the less storyboarded, the more quick flashes and decentered uh, focus on the panicking protagonist is perhaps not welcomed by some who prefer a more professional or old school kind of formal approach to filmmaking rather than this more, it's almost more ad hoc DIY. It comes across that way, even though the film is, seems reasonably budgeted. Well, I mean, you ever try to put a film together? Yeah, this film is definitely reasonably budgeted. I'm telling you now. If one is not inclined toward this style of filmmaking and prefers the more storyboarded, more rigid, panel-like, and precisely fluid, rather than a psychological barrage of input, the latter can be considered arguably more immersive and commercially has mostly won out over time unless I am forgetting anything. Although true, when poorly executed, is wholly incoherent. Michael Bay, Paul Greengrass, almost every Western or certainly English language war film since Saving Private Ryan, but, so, if one is okay, though, or embraces or ignores these elements of the film, 2001's Dagon by Stuart Gordon, they can embrace it, Dagon, as a clear horror masterpiece. If the performances in the more 90s slash 21st century filmic embrace of flashes rather than frames were suited, and even these flashes are modest in Dagon, however, totally, though totally alien to a film from 1985 or even 1991, if one can look past these two things, which I think are plenty minute, ignorable, or positive, then I don't see what a horror film fan could find to fault about, especially in a Blu-ray ripoff. By the way, I'd never seen it in this in this transfer before. But there's not really any art to be faulted with. If one is okay with gore and horror excess or indulgence or whatever. I don't think the horror genre can do anything except haunted house cliches about being considered indulgent by the fascistic prudes. You know, maybe Dagon could be considered, you know, if one was okay with horror tropes, essentially, and more violent graphic horror tropes, maybe Dagon could be considered a film masterpiece, period.
Oh, it's just a movie about a guy running away from deep ones. Fish people kill me in case you haven't read Lost Alaska. And an eventual sacrifice to the old ones. That's uh, Cthulhu's race, for those who, again, aren't as familiar with Lovecraft. This cannot be a masterpiece compared to miscellaneous drama about some spoiled, impolite twat or some Hollywood narcissist demanding an Academy Award nomination. Oh wait, that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Of course Dagon is superior, even just on paper, to the average film drama. If you'd rather watch Ron Howard, Greta Gerwig, or some of Scorsese's recent garbage... Silence, a remake of Masahiro Shinoda's film and adapting a Japanese novel which still felt wholly powerful when reading an English translation is obviously accepted, whatever. Then Dagon, well, you either cannot stomach graphic violence, which is understandable. I've learned how easy it is to love others, even if they find this sort of thing reprehensible and vomit-inducing. Horror film fans will find that, generally speaking, choosing to watch a film with some girl we've just met is dependent on this. Although... If it just comes down to a prejudice against genre versus drama, I don't know what to tell you, but that drama isn't real. I ever watched the most mise-en-scene documentary you can find, and even Frederick Wiseman will tell you that his vision is just one perspective, will acknowledge that you want to indulge in fictional fantastical stories without the stigma of it being unreal or an escape. Anyone who doesn't want to escape from this reality is a sociopath or a vampire. The fact that Dagon isn't considered a filmic masterpiece is just annoying, really. 